I'm scared. I'm real scared. So, I mean, people, you're going to be scared, I mean, but you, you go through it. Jonna Ludwig has had a tough few days. She was attacked by a dog, which bit off a large piece of her nose. It's a terrible time, but relief will come through surgery. To me, it means having my nose back and not having to look like a freak walking around. Jonna's surgeon is Dr. Fred Menick. Hi, How's everything going? Okay. He's a world-renowned specialist in nose reconstruction. What we'll plan to do, we have to make lining, and one old-fashioned method, which has now been, I think, reborn a little bit, we'll take a little piece of skin from behind your ear and replace that as lining, and then... Now, are you going to do that today? Right. Dr. Menick will repair Jonna's nose by transplanting tissue from other parts of her body. It's the cornerstone of plastic surgery, but by no means a new technique. Jonna's operation was first attempted thousands of years ago. The evidence is found a long way from Tucson. The Wellcome Library in London holds one of the most extensive collections of historical medical texts. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. This is always an exciting moment when a new manuscript arrives on the table. The library's Dominic Wujastic has extensively translated one of its prized artifacts. This is a manuscript, that means a handwritten book, of the of a Sanskrit text called the Sushruta Sanghita, the compendium of a man called Sushruta. The name Sushruta embellishes the walls of the Welcome Library, along with those of other great innovators in medicine and science. He was a surgeon who lived 2,000 years ago in what is now India. Sushruta and his group were doing operations 2,000 years ago that were absolutely stunning. I mean, you'd think it was science fiction if we weren't sure historically that it was really that old. Uh, they were performing surgical uh, operations that weren't discovered in Europe for another 1,500 years. Sushruta's original manuscript is long lost. This copy deals with many aspects of medicine, but it's best known for its instructions on the surgical repair of a severed nose. The need for Indians to develop surgery uh, in this ancient time probably came from punishments uh, that were inflicted on, on uh, criminals who might have had their noses cut off as, as, a, as a very public warning and as a punishment. The severing of an enemy's nose has been a Hindu practice through the ages. The injury was bad enough, but trying to repair it 2,000 years ago would have been, for the patient, a most grisly affair. Today, modern anesthetics make a nose reconstruction bearable. Jonna Ludwig will not feel a thing. We cleaned up the defect and it's a little torn up. Even though the technology gap is vast, the method Dr. Menick will use to repair Jana's nose is a direct adaptation of the Indian surgeon Sushruta's 2,000-year-old technique. He created a little three-dimensional bent foil pattern of the missing skin. Dr. Menick has made a template to guide his scalpel when he cuts donor skin from Jana's forehead. Sushruta so basically did the same thing. They made a pattern of a leaf placed it on the forehead, and then cut out an area of skin corresponding to what they thought needed to be replaced. Sushruta's manuscript is concise on how to do the job. So what he actually says in his own words from about 2,000 years ago is this. When a nose has been cut off, I shall describe to you properly how it can be repaired. First, you take the leaf from a tree and make a template the same shape as the nose.
place it on the cheek and cut from the cheek a piece of skin the same shape as the leaf. Work carefully but swiftly. In an age where there is no anaesthetic, working quickly is very important because your patient is likely to be screaming. Um, in fact, most of these surgical texts, uh, the anaesthetic is for strong men to hold the patient down. Cutting skin from the cheek was not the end of the agony. Then he scarifies the nose, that is to say, the stump where the nose was gets uh, scratched and made bloody and ready to receive new tissue. And then this new, new piece of uh, skin cut from the side of the face is, is attached to this scarified area. To complete the operation, Sushruta devised a way to allow the patient to breathe. Two tubes made of reed were inserted into the new nose. It was all held together by tight bandages until the skin grew into place. Uh, Sushruta ends by saying, the physician who can do this, who knows this technique, is fit to repair, uh, to work on a king. Ya evam eva jani yat sa rajnya kartum arhati. He is uh, worthy to uh, perform on a king. Sushruta's surgical innovation has influenced medicine through the ages. His techniques were adopted by travelers and taken west. The compendium that Sushruta created was well known in India. And it isn't until about the 7th or 8th century of the Christian era that we begin to hear um, that it's known in the Middle East and that there are Arabic translations of this work. But the knowledge does not appear to have made its way to Europe. While surgeons in India were refining their methods, European attempts at nose reconstruction, even as late as the 16th century, were more butchery than surgery. Sometimes a slave's nose is cut off and stuck on in place of a, of a, of a damaged or removed nose. Sometimes skin is just cut out of the thigh or out of another part of the body and a crude attempt is made to stick it on. The closest an early European surgeon ever got to performing an effective nose job happened in the late 1500s. The diaries of an Italian surgeon, Gaspare Taglio Cazzi, show that he worked out the transplanted skin must come from the patient and maintain a blood supply. But the treatment was nothing short of a nightmare. Uh, here's the patient at the beginning with, with no nose there. And Talia Kotsi puts him into a, something, a, a, a garment rather like a straitjacket. Here we have it. And it's covered in um, armholes and ear holes and straps and buckles and so forth. And a big, a big strap on the, on the top of the head um, where, the, uh, where the patient's arm is strapped into this position. I think even at the front of the garment, he's actually sewn into it. Here's a picture of the needles that are used for sewing the patient actually into this garment. The patient is held in a completely rigid position with his arm on the top of his head and his nose adjacent to his, the top of his arm. And the idea is that as a slice of skin from the arm is taken, it's left connected to the arm, but the other end is attached to the nose. And for a while, as you can see in this illustration, there's actually a tube of skin, a skin graft there between the nose and the arm as a tube. And the patient has to stay without moving in that position, in some accounts, for up to 40 days. A great ordeal to be strapped into one position. I imagine the person's arm would probably go to sleep within a few minutes and you still have 40 days to go. Even after 40 days, the torture was not over. The graft was then severed and the arm skin cut into the shape of a nose. Uh, very arduous, and there were still residual problems. Um, there are stories about people who blow their nose too hard and the nose comes away in their handkerchief, or uh, there are other accounts about how noses uh, had a ten tendency to uh, drop off in severe winters and uh, other horror stories. Sushruta's 2,000-year-old operation was superior, by far 
And we know that Indian surgeons got even better at it. They learned how to rebuild a severed nose almost like plastic surgeons do today, where the transplanted skin comes not from the cheek, but from the forehead, complete with a blood supply. To have a healthy flat, we've lifted it up from the donor site with all its layers, pink color all the end, getting a good blood supply, and this can be lifted up and swung down. When the forehead tissue heals in its place, Jonna's nose will look as it did before the dog attack. Plastic surgeons refer to this technique as the Indian method. Dominic Wujastic explains. At the end of the 18th century, two British uh, physicians living in Pune, which is a well-known town near Bombay, witnessed an operation which left them breathless. They were, they were uh, amazed at what they saw. The surgical procedure was described in a London journal, the Gentleman's Magazine of October 1794. A man had suffered the loss of his nose, and an Indian surgeon rebuilt it. The skin was taken from the forehead, and you can just see a pale patch there. Uh, it was left joined at the bridge of the nose, turned round, and a new nose fashioned while the skin was still in place. So this brilliant idea of taking skin from the face to repair the face, to use tissue from close to the scene of the wound, was a revelation. This was really new science, nothing like it had been seen before. At least nothing like it had been seen in Europe. But since Sushruta's 2,000-year-old technique was introduced to Western medicine in the late 1700s, it has become the cornerstone of modern nose surgery. From the point of view of the world history of medicine, it was staggering. It's conceivable that it may have an earlier prehistory in India. It may have been done even earlier. After all, Sushruta is a learned man writing it in a textbook. It's likely this has a history before him, but we don't know that. We can't see into the mists of time. 